Welcome everybody, this is Al with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the Old Testament chronologically in 111 days. We're on day 93. Today we'll be reading a mixture of chapters. We'll be reading uh, Second Chronicles, Habakkuk, and more Jeremiah. So let's get started here in Second Chronicles chapter 36. Verse 1. Then the people of the land took Jehoaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. So we're kind of going back, well, we are going back to Josiah. So remember, Josiah was pretty much the last, no, he was the last good king. He was a very good king. And then after him, yeah, nothing but bad kings. So, yeah, Josiah was the last good king in Judah. So, they took Jehoaz, the son, made him king. So, Jehoaz was 20 and 3 years old when he began to reign. He reigned three months in Jerusalem. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem and con condemned the land in a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem and turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jehoaz his brother and carried him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign. He reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of Yahweh to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, and Jehoiachin his son reigned in his stead. Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of Yahweh and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah in Jerusalem. And then finally we're at Zedekiah, which is the last king of Judah. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh his God and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of Yahweh. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto Yahweh God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of Yahweh, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And Yahweh, God of their fathers, sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, and despised his words, and misused his prophets, until the wrath of Yahweh arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew the young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young men, or maiden, old men, or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand and all the vessels of the house of god great and small and all the treasures of the house of yahweh and the treasures of the king and of his princes all these he brought to babylon and they burnt the house of god and break down the wall of jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof and them that he had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia, <clears throat> to fulfill the word of Yahweh by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, for as long as she lay desolate she kept Sabbath, to fulfill three score and ten years. So, remember a score is twenty, twenty, forty, sixty, plus ten is seventy years. Seventy years they had to be in Babylon. Now the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of Yahweh, spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah, might be accomplished, Yahweh stirred the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, 
and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, and all the kingdoms of the earth hath Yahweh, God of heaven, given me, and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among you of all his people? Yahweh, his God, be with him, and let him go up. Habakkuk, chapter 1. The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Yahweh, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save? Why dost thou show me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slack, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land, to possess the dwelling places that are, are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful, their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards, and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far, and they shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. They shall come all for violence, their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them, and they shall derid every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend in putting his power into his God. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, mine Holy One? We shall not die. O Yahweh, thou hast ordained them for judgment, and, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Therefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? and makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things, and have no ruler over them. They take up all of them with the angle, they catch them in their net, and gather them in their drag. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they sacrifice unto their net, and burn incense unto their drag, because by them their portion is fat, and their meat plenteous. Shall they therefore empty their net, and not spare continually to slay the nations? Habakkuk 2 I will stand upon my watch, and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And Yahweh answered me, and said, Write the vision, and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an unappointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry. Wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who is enlarged as a desire as hell, and as is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him that increaseth in that which is not his! How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them? Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, and of the city, and of them that dwell therein. Woe to him that covereth a coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people, and hast sinned against thy soul, for the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establisheth a city by iniquity. Behold, it is not of Yahweh of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh, as the waters cover the sea. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, and putteth, puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of Yahweh's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. 
for the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it, the molten image, and the teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols? Woe well unto him that saith to the wood, Awake! To the dumb stone, Arise! It shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Habakkuk 3 A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shigionoth O Yahweh, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Yahweh, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known, and in wrath remember mercy. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns come out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth that he beheld, and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered, the perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was Yahweh displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea, that thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bow was made quite naked, according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of water passed by, the deep uttered his voice, and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation, as at the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Thou didst march through the land in indignation, thou didst thrush the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked, by discovering the foundation to the neck. Selah. Thou didst strike through with his staffs the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Thou didst walk through the sea with the, thine horses, through the heaps of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in Yahweh, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Oh, I like this, this last verse. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hen's feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. To the chief singer upon my string instruments so yeah basically hen's feet they have really good feet for basically walking up mountains really steep and hard paths so that's saying something god is going to make our feet like hen's feet you know the feet that are made for covering rocky mountainous terrain steep places and that's why it says he will make me to walk upon mine high places because, you know, hen's feet, they walk high places in the mountains. So it's just a great verse here. Again, giving us comfort and strength. Lord God is our strength. So, great verse. Habakkuk 3.19 Alright, moving on to Jeremiah 41. So, we started to read this uh, yesterday. Gedaliah, who was basically ruler, governor of the land, Nebuchadnezzar had basically put him in charge, and he was murdered by Ishmael. <clears throat> so, at this point in the timeline, um, basically there's hardly anybody left in the land of Judah. Um, everyone's been carried away or killed. Um, Jerusalem's been destroyed. And, yeah, there's only a few people left uh, in the land. And so, um, that's where we're at here. Now, it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal, and the princes of the king, even ten men with him, came 
unto Gedali the son of Ahikam to Mizpah, and there they did eat bread together in Mizpah. Then arose Ishmael the son of Nethaniah and the ten men that were with him, and smote Gedali the son of Ahikam the son of Shaphan with the sword, and slew him whom the king of Babylon had made governor of the land. Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him, even with Gedali at Mizpah, and the Chaldeans that were found there, and the men of war. And it came to pass the second day after he had slain Gedaliah, and no man knew it, that there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samara, even fourscore men, having their beards shaven, and their clothes rent, and having cut themselves with offerings and incense in their hand to bring them to the house of Yahweh. And Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, went forth from Mizpah to meet them, weeping all along as he went. And it came to pass, as he met them, he said unto them, Come to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. And it was so when they came into the midst of the city, Ishmael the son of Nathanai slew them and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men that were with him. But ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, for we have treasures in the field of wheat, of barley, and oil, of honey. So he forbear and slew them not among their brethren. Now the pit wherein Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of men whom he had slain because of Gedaliah was it which Asa the king had made for fear of Basha king of Israel. And Ishmael the son of Nethaniah filled it with them that were slain. Then Ishmael carried away captive all the residue of the people that were in Mizpah, even the king's daughters and all the people that remained in Mizpah, whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam. And Ishmael the son of Nethaniah carried them away captive and departed to go over to the Ammonites. But when Yohanan, the son of Kareah, and all that the captains of the forces that were with him heard of all the evil that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, had done. Then they took all the men and went to fight with Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, and found him by great waters that are in Gibeon. Now it came to pass that when all the people which were with Ishmael saw Yohanan, the son of Kareah, all the captains of the forces that were with him, then they were glad, saw so the people that Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah, cast about and returned and went unto Yohanan, the son of Kareah. But Ishmael the son of Nathaniah escaped from Yohanan with eight men and went to the Ammonites. Then took Yohanan the son of Kari and all the captains of the forces that were with him, all the remnant of the people, whom he had recovered from Ishmael the son of Nathaniah from Mizpah, after that he had slain Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, even mighty men of war, and the women, and the children, and the eunuchs, whom he had brought again from Gibeon. And they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Chimham, which is by Bethlehem, to go to enter into Egypt because of the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them, because Ishmael the son of Nathaniah had slain Gedaliah the son of Ahikam, whom the king of Babylon made governor in the land. Jeremiah 42 Then all the captains of the forces, and Yohanan the son of Korea, and Jezaniah the son of Hoshiah, and all the people, from the least even unto the greatest, came near, and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, let we beseech thee our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto Yahweh, for God, thy God, even all, for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us, that Yahweh thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk, and the thing that we may do. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto Yahweh your God according to your words, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing Yahweh shall answer you, I will declare it unto you, I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, Yahweh, be a true and faithful witness between us, if we do not, even according to all the things for which Yahweh thy God shall send thee to us. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of Yahweh our God, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of Yahweh our God. And it came to pass after ten days that the word of Yahweh came unto Jeremiah. Then called he Johanan, the son of Kareah, and all the captains of the forces which were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest, and said unto them, Thus saith Yahweh, the God of Israel, unto whom ye sent me to present your supplication before him. If ye will still abide in this land, then I will build you, and not pull you down, and I will plant you, and not pluck you up, for I repent me of the evil that I have done unto you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith Yahweh, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. And I will show mercies unto you, that he may have mercy upon you, and cause you to return to your land. But if ye say, We will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of Yahweh your God, saying, No, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger of bread, and there will we dwell. 
And now therefore hear the word of Yahweh, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, If ye wholly set your faces to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine, whereof ye were afraid, shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that will bring upon them. For thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, As mine anger and my fury hath been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an execration, and an astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. Yahweh hath said concerning you, O ye remnant of Judah, Go ye not into Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. For ye disassembled in your hearts when ye sent me unto Yahweh your God, saying, Pray for us unto Yahweh our God, and according to all that Yahweh our God shall say, so declare unto us, and we will do it. And now I have this day declared it to you. But ye have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh your God, nor anything for the which he hath sent me unto you. Now therefore, know certainly that ye shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, in the place whither ye desire to go, and to sojourn. Yeah, so they're, they're all like, oh, we'll listen to God no matter what. But they already made up their minds, they already made up their hearts that they're going to go into Egypt which is not good news. They don't know it, but God had already planned to punish Egypt uh, again, and uh, an army is coming, and it's going to wipe out basically Egypt completely. So that's why he said to remain in the land, but they did not want to listen. All right, Jeremiah 43. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people all the words that Yahweh their God, for which the Yahweh their God had sent him to them, even all these words, then spake Azariah the son of Hoshiah, and Johanan the son of Kariah, and all the proud men saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. <laughs> Yahweh our God hath not set thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. But Baruch the son of setteth thee on against us, for to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death, and carry us away captives into Babylon. So Yohanan the son of Karai, and all the captains of the, of the forces, and all the people, obeyed not the voice of Yahweh to dwell in the land of Judah. But Yohanan the son of Karai, and all the captains of the forces, took all the remnant of Judah, that were returned from all nations, whether they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah, even men and women and children and king's daughters, even and every person that Nebuzaradan, and captain of the guard, had left, with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch the son of Neriah. So they basically forced them to come with him. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of Yahweh. Thus came they even to Tephenis. Then came the word of Yahweh unto Jeremiah in Tephenis, saying, Take great stones in thine hand, and hide them in the clay in the brickland, which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tephenis, in the sight of the men of Judah, and say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, and will set his throne upon these stones that I have hid, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. And when he cometh, he shall smite the land of Egypt, and deliver such as are for death to death, and such as are for captivity to captivity and such as for the sword to the sword. And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry away captives, and he shall array himself with the land of Egypt, as a shepherd putteth on his garment, and he shall go forth from thence in peace. He shall break also the image of Beshemesh that is in the land of Egypt, and in the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. <sighs> Jeremiah 44. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt, which dwell at Migdol, and Tephenis, and at Nopf, and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, Ye have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah, and behold, this day they are a desolation, and no man dwelleth therein, because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense and to serve other gods, whom they knew not, neither they, ye, 
nor your fathers, howbeit I sent unto you all my servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, O oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate, but they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. Wherefore my fury and mine anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. Therefore now thus saith Yahweh, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, Wherefore commit ye this great evil against your souls, and cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling, out of Judah, to leave you none to remain, and that ye provoke me to wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt, whither ye be gone to dwell, that ye might cut yourselves off, and that ye might be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. So yeah, they went to Egypt against God's will, not only that, that, but they worshipped the Egyptian gods. It's ridiculous. They didn't learn their lesson by seeing Jerusalem destroyed from worshipping, you know, the gods of the surrounding nations. And now they went back to Egypt and they're worshipping Egyptian gods. Ugh. Oh. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of their wives? and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. They are not humbled even unto this day, neither have they feared, nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil, and to cut off all Judah. And I will take the remnant of Judah, that I have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt, to sojourn there, and they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. They shall die from the least even unto the greatest by the sword and by the famine, and they shall be an excretion and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have punished Jerusalem, by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah which are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain, that they should return into the land of Judah, to the which they have a desire to return and dwell there, for none shall return but such as shall escape. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto the gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros answered Jeremiah, saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes, and the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of victuals, and we were well, and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things, and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven, and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her, and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Oh, my word, these people are so blind. Then Jeremiah sent all the people, to the men and to the women, to the people which had given him that answer, saying, the incense that ye burned in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, ye, your fathers, your kings, your princes, and the people of the land, did not Yahweh remember them, and came it not into his mind, so that Yahweh could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings, and because of the abominations which ye have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation, and an astonishment, and a curse, without an inhabitant, at, as, as of this day. Because ye burned incense, and because ye have sinned against Yahweh, and have not obeyed the voice of Yahweh, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore, this evil has happened unto you as it is this day. Whew, man, Jeremiah has some amazing patience. Amazing patience. Because um, at this point, I'd just be so fed up and frustrated with this people. But, you know, Jeremiah is still going at it, still trying to convince them and show them that they are wrong that they have transgressed greatly and done abominations, but they just won't hear it at all. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of Yahweh, all Judah that are in the land of Egypt. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. Ye will surely accomplish your vows, and surely perform your vows. 
Therefore hear ye the word of Yahweh, all Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, saith Yahweh, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. Behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good, and all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by the famine until there be an end of them. Yet a small number that escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah, and all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose words shall stand, mine or theirs. And this shall be a sign unto you, saith Yahweh, that I will punish you in this place, that ye may know that my word shall surely stand against you for evil. Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will give Pharaoh for a king of Egypt into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of them that seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah king of Judah into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, his enemy, and that sought his life. Oh man, I just, I, can, I can't really fully understand how they saw the destruction. This is a small remnant, mind you, that escaped going to Babylon, right? They, they basically were blessed and lucky. I don't believe in luck, but they were, they were blessed. And they still, they still disobeyed God many, many times and worshipped the Queen of Heaven, which is a false god, and um, rather just do their own thing than listen to God Almighty, the one true living God. Sad. It's sad, but they will know that it is God Almighty that they disobeyed. So that's going to be it for today. Um, I think uh, my favorite, Habakkuk 3.19, a great reminder that God is our strength no matter what we're going through. He will make our feet like his feet. He will make us to walk upon high places. So an amazing verse. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him. Trust in him. Wait upon him and hope in him. And you'll never be sorry. And God willingly, we'll see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. So thanks again. Take care and God bless.